In this video, you're going to learn beginner night photography, and we're going to get your camera set up for your first shot. Hello, my name is Chris Attrell. I have taught night photography to over 6,000 students all across Western Canada. This is my first of about 20 nocturnal bliss low light and night photography videos I'm going to be filming this summer. So please subscribe to my channel if you want to see them all. I made the process for getting your first night shot very simple. You'll be able to get a shot like this your first time. When people see this picture, they think it's a picture of the Northern Lights. In fact, it's just a picture of Creepy Swing Set Store and the Auroras happen to come out. For beginners, you shouldn't worry about night events. That would be northern lights, lightning, meteor showers. Astro landscapes are very simple. An astro landscape is shooting something at night the same way you would during the day. And then once you learn how to do an astro landscape and you can shoot stuff like this or this, then when you do get a night event like lightning or auroras, your pictures look a whole lot better. So let's get started with equipment. All you need is a DSLR or mirrorless camera. Your kit lens will work fine for most night photography. A tripod and a flashlight. An optional piece of equipment would be a release cable. And of course you'll need bug spray and maybe some extra clothes in case it starts getting cold out. I will start covering more advanced equipment in future videos. But for your first astro landscape, this is all you need. To simplify the process of night photography, you should know how to change your settings and why you are changing them. And I highly recommend you learn this at home before you go out into the country. The hardest thing about night photography is staying up. The second hardest thing about night photography is operating your camera in the dark with cold wind, mosquitoes, and creepy sounds everywhere. So let's cover those settings now. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our camera in manual mode. On your mode dial on top of your camera, switch that to M. In manual mode, you get to set ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. And for night photography, you will have to set all three. The first thing we're gonna cover is your ISO settings. If you remember from the film days, you bought your film based on the ISO or ASA standards. Those standards have carried over to the digital photography age. 100 ISO is the highest quality, but you need a lot of light for that. 6400 ISO is less quality, but you need it in very dark situations. So for most night photography, we're gonna be using high ISO settings. For beginners, your first ISO setting for night photography will be 3200. You may notice in this picture at 6400 ISO, we've introduced a lot of grain. 3200 is a cleaner image, so for beginners it works great. I usually shoot between 400 and 1600 ISO. These are very clean images. However, I have experience and I have an expensive lens, which allows me to do this without any trouble with exposure. So to change your ISO to 3200, most cameras have an ISO button on them. For Fujis and Sonys, you might find the ISO settings under the function button or FN button. Click that and there'll be a setting for ISO that you can adjust. For Nikons, it's a little more tricky. You're gonna to have to go into menu camera menu, and then ISO sensitivity settings. Set your ISO to 3200 and make sure to turn auto ISO to off. And don't forget to turn it back on when you're done your night photography. The next value we're gonna change is our aperture. On your camera, you may notice there's some values that look like 5.6, 7.0. Those are called f-stops. For night photography, you want to shoot what's called a wide aperture. 
A wide aperture means the iris in your camera is open the widest, and this will let in the most amount of light. To get to a wide aperture, you want a lower f-stop value. So for a kit lens that's wide open, you should be able to spin your wheel down to 3.5. Because it's regulated by your lens, there are some specialty lenses that can go down to an aperture of 2.8, 1.8, or even 1.4. That could be as much as eight times more light coming into your camera. Some cameras have two wheels. One of the wheels will change the aperture value, but most cameras only have one wheel. To change the aperture value in manual mode, you're going to have to hold the exposure compensation button down. For Nikons, it's on the top usually. For Canons, it's on the back and it says AV. While you are holding the exposure compensation button down, now you can spin the command dial. When you're spinning the command dial, get your f-stop value to the lowest number possible, which is usually 3.5 on a kit lens, and make sure your lens is wide open. If you're zoomed in at all, the widest you can go is probably 5.6 or 4.5. Now the last thing you have to change is your shutter speed. Most cameras can go from 1 4 thousandth of a second, which is really fast, to 30 seconds, which is really slow. So just spin your command dial and you'll notice those values will change. You want to spin your wheel until the fractions go away. When you get to the point where it says one inch, that means one second. Five inches, five seconds. Let's spin it to 30 seconds, which is 30 inches. This means your camera is going to be taking a picture for 30 seconds. If you tried these same settings, on a bright sunny day or even indoors, it's probably going to overexpose and your picture will be completely white. But when you get out into the darkness, this should be just fine for most nights. And that's why this is the simplest night photography class you'll ever take. You're going to use 3200 ISO, an aperture 3.5, but your shutter speed will be the only thing you might have to adjust your first night shot. If 30 seconds is too bright, change it to 25 seconds, or 20 seconds, or 15. There's only about seven shutter speeds you're going to play with, and one of them will work. On a full moon with fresh snow, you may only need a five second exposure. If 30 seconds is still too dark, that's when you're going to have to switch to bulb mode. The setting after 30 inches is called bulb. When you use bulb mode with a release cable, you can shoot for two minutes, five minutes, or even two hours if you want to. That's why release cables are very handy. These cost about $10 on Amazon or about $20 to $30 at camera stores. Those are the only camera settings you're going to need to know for your first night shot. And if you practice them at home before you go out in the field, you'll be way more successful. And it gets even easier. You don't have to go out into the field and do these settings on your camera. Do them at home or in your car. So all you have to do is go out into the field in your camera setup. Because that's where most people have trouble, trying to figure out how to change their settings in the dark. You'll also need to learn how to manually focus at night. That is the title of my next video. I'm gonna teach you three simple methods for manually focusing in any dark or low light situation. Now here are some very important tips for beginners. There are variables that you can't control, like clouds, moon phases, and distance to a city. To increase your chance of being successful, I highly recommend you go when there's a 30% moon or brighter, or when it's very cloudy. Cloudy nights are bright nights. If you have any filters on your lenses, like neutral density, UV, or circular polarizer filters, take those off for night photography. They can either degrade the quality of the image, or they'll leave a weird imprint in your image when you're done. If your lens has image stabilization or vibration reduction option on it, turn it off. 
This can have a negative effect on the quality of the pictures. I also tend to overexpose my images just a little bit. So if I took a 15 second exposure and it looked just fine, I'll go ahead and shoot a 20 or 25 second exposure so it's a little bit overexposed. The reason is the images on the back of your camera tend to look brighter than what they do on your computer. I also highly recommend you scout your location during the day and plan your shoot and don't just show up somewhere in the middle of the night hoping it works out. Sometimes there can be surprises like construction setups or a camper. And you want to look for those hazards. If you don't find them during the day, you'll find them at night. And you also want to check for animals. One thing I always do when I show up on a location at night is when I get out of my car, I don't try to be quiet. Once I get out of my car, I bang my flashlights and I shut my door loudly. The reason is, if those animals know you're there, you won't have a confrontation. It's when you surprise them when animals can be a little grumpy. Adding a little bit of painting with light with your photos can be a lot of fun. I have a video coming out very shortly all about painting with light. Once you learn how to do astral landscapes and painting with light, that's where all the fun is. If you have a question or comment about this video, please leave it in the comment section below. I will respond. And finally, here's a tip for my wife. When you're done at the end of the night, you're going to be so impressed with how simple this was that you're going to get excited. And when you're excited, you forget things. Always make sure when you're done that you turn on your flashlight and make sure you brought everything home because if you can't see it, you'll probably forget it. And don't forget to undo your settings. The first thing I do when I'm done at the end of the night is I put my lens back to autofocus and my ISO back to 100 or auto and put your camera back to aperture mode or auto wherever you had it before. Have your camera prepared for tomorrow. If you subscribe to my channel, I'll be posting more advanced night photography videos, including equipment, night events, and shooting in urban low light environments. And I'll also be doing some of my Lightroom editing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.